Hi, I'm Mr. Omidio. Okay, I'm going to discuss uh, the type 2 kind of questions that comes with acceleration due to free fall. Okay, that is uh, throwing an object upwards and let it fall back to the original position. So something like this. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at this. When, when the object leaves the hand at A, right, it will have the greatest uh, speed because uh, the hand actually applies a force on the object. Okay, so it's moving upward here with a maximum speed of let's say 20 meter per second. And once it leaves the hand, right, it is in free fall motion, so it experiences the acceleration due to free fall, which is downwards. So the direction of motion is in the opposite direction of the acceleration due to free fall and this is going to cause the object to decelerate. So as it decelerates, the speed will drop to let's say about 10 meters per second. The object is still moving upwards and then it will go to the top and when it reach the top, there is no more speed. Okay, now the object starts to fall downwards. As it falls downwards, the direction of motion is the same as the acceleration, which, is, which are both downwards, so it will cause it to accelerate. So at D, it will be moving at 10 meters per second downwards, and at E, it will be moving downward at 20 meters per second. So if you were to represent this on a speed time graph, it looks something like this. At A, the speed is 20. At B, the speed is 10. It looks something like a V-shape. And what can we extract from this graph? The area under graph, down here, it will be the distance from a to C and the distance under graph here it will be represented by this area it will give us the distance from C to E since we start from the same place and then it comes back to the same place the distance from A to C and C to E are the same okay and next we move on to velocity time graph the difference between velocity and speed is that velocity is a, is a vector and speed is a scalar. So velocity has got a direction involved. So in this, in this scenario, right, there's two directions of a motion, it's upward and downward. So for, for velocity, right, we can actually assign, we can assign a positive sign and negative sign to each of the direction. So in this case, it looks something like this. Let's say upward we assign it to a positive value and downwards we assign it to a negative value so at position A it's moving upward with a speed of 20 meters per second we can say that the velocity is positive 20 meters per second and at B it's moving upward again so the velocity must be positive at 10 meter per second and at C velocity is equal to 0 at D is moving downwards so we say that the velocity is negative 10 meter per second and at E the velocity is negative 20 meter per second okay we can represent this on a velocity time graph okay uh, forgot about the acceleration due to free fall acceleration due to free fall is downwards so we represent it with a negative 10 meter per second squared. Okay, uh, let's plot the velocity time graph. At A, the velocity is 20. At B, the velocity is positive 10. At C is 0. At D, it is negative 10. And at E, it is negative 20. So if you plot this out, you get the straight line that passes through 0 at C. Okay, and what kind of information can we extract from this graph? The area under graph, this is, this is the area that is above the x-axis because it is positive 
displacement as it is moving upwards and this can be calculated by the area under the graph and the area below right is under the x-axis so we see this as negative displacement as it is moving downwards and we can also find it by uh, the area under graph 